What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Cold Game. Man, this is a crazy day. That boy, Wardell Stephen Curry, you know, when people start acting up, you got to call them by their full government name. Wardell Stephen Curry decided to act up today. 62? 62 points in a regular season game is ridiculous, especially when you think about everything that they're going through as a team where you don't have to guard Kelly Oubre, you don't have to guard Draymond because he still hasn't scored a field goal in his two games, you don't really ha have to guard Wiggins unless it's an isolation situation. For him to drop 62 on a on a good team too, the Portland Trailblazers, is ridiculous. I may have to go out there and get those Curry 8s because apparently they just turn you to a shooting guy. What's up? Welcome back to Call Game. Be sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you are new. We do nothing but talk about basketball around here. So see if you are subscribed and hit that bell so you never miss an episode of Called Game. All right, let's start from the top of today's slate of games. A little PSA. Just because your team's name is not in the title doesn't mean I don't talk about your teams. I've been seeing people say on Twitter that they have not watched the recent episodes of Call Game because I won't talk about their team. And I look at their bio and their team is Philly. And we talked about Philly so much this week. Just because your team's name's not in the title of the video, don't mean I don't talk about them. I can only talk about or put so much in the title. Let's talk about the first game, though. Um, this is one of those days where the first game started significantly earlier than the other one. So I really got to sit down and pay close attention to Boston versus Detroit. And uh, uh, Detroit got their first win of the season against Boston a few days ago. So this was like the, the Celtics' revenge. And I'm kind of liking the way this is going because of the COVID stuff where a team is in the city for two straight games. So you get to get the splits and, you know, a little revenge. Because you think about it, if somebody hit a game winner on me in a regular season game, most of the time I don't see them to three months later. And maybe I ain't even upset about that one game that we lost against them. But this is like that good old back-to-back -back, um, against the same team. And then... People have been asking me to, to talk about Jalen Brown more. Everybody should know my opinion on Jalen Brown. If you follow me on Twitter, you know that Jalen Brown is one of my favorite players. He is one of the guys that I would love to build a team around. His defense is great on the ball mostly. He getting better off the ball, but his defense is great. And then his his offensive game has evolved is evolving every single day. This guy, if he keeps playing like this, he's an all-star this year. And, of course, Jason Tatum hits the shot. He called game. But I want to talk a little bit about the Pistons because – when Jeremy Grant decided to go to Detroit, it was mostly because he wanted to see an increased role than what he had been seeing with the Denver Nuggets. And we were questioning, or I was questioning, I'm not going to speak for everybody, what that could look like for Jeremy Grant. And now I feel like an idiot because Jeremy Grant, if you look at it, every single year he's got better and better and better. You think about him on those tanking Philadelphia 76 receives to where he is now, he has got nothing but better. So it's bad of me to kind of doubt the idea of him being a one option, even if it is on the bad team. And he has proved me wrong throughout the first couple games of the season where he actually looks good doing more than like when he was in Denver, he was a great defensive guy, but a lot of the points that he saw was like catch and shoot. And now he's creating his own shot and things like that. Um, I still don't know what's going on with Blake. I don't. I, I think maybe there's an interview, or maybe I'm I'm tripping, where he was like he wants to win a championship, and obviously he can't really do that right here. And in the last couple minutes of this game, he was just really bad, um, really bad offensively and defensively. And a lot of times in this game, he just resulted to being basically a spot up shooter, which is different from what I've seen from Blake throughout his career. So I don't know what's really going on there, but I hope that Blake gets better. You know what I'm saying? Uh, another one of those losses for the Detroit Pistons were like there are things to take away that are positive, and you're still tanking for potentially getting Cade Cunningham. Let's get to I think it's going to be the title of this video, talking about the Brooklyn Nets, who lost today to the Wizards. Hey, the Wizards get their first win with Russell Westbrook in the lineup. Um, a, a big win for them, and that's two in a row, if I'm not mistaken. And then we have the Brooklyn Nets losing another game. You think about where it started the season, where they looked unstoppable through the first couple games of the season. Things have halted significantly for the, the, the Brooklyn Nets. And one thing I've noticed is that since Spencer Dinwiddie has gone down, not many people talked about Spencer Dinwiddie going down. Of course, everybody knows that he's an important part to this team, but there are people like, Without him, they'll still be fine. They'll still be solid, and which, which is kind of true, but he plays such a big role for what they were trying to do. Now, I understand before he got injured, he wasn't shooting the ball well, but he adds an element of playmaking to that starting lineup that they don't have. Kyrie is great. KD is great, but the, neither of those two players we would consider playmaking players, and Spencer did what he kind of was that. There's like... There's a, a mixture of no playmaking and bad defense in their rotation right now. And that was one of my biggest question marks for this team going into the season. It's like, who do you trust on the wing to guard anybody? The answer is like, Kevin Durant is an improved defender throughout his career, but I'm not trusting Kevin Durant to really lock down. Kyrie Irving is not going to lock down. And then, like, this is one of those games where, like, Jared Allen, statistically, I'm looking at it, 14, 11, four blocks. I didn't feel that during the game. I didn't. 
Him and DeAndre Jordan got killed, and they got killed so much that it resulted in Steve Nash deciding we're going to play small, and then they played small, and Thomas Bryant was out there eating. This team got out-rebounded on the offensive side of the glass, and it was significant. They could not stop turning the ball over, and they didn't play any defense. And that whole defense thing is is one thing that's going to to be the factor for a lot of the games this season because as good of an offensive team that they can be because they have KD and Kyrie and shooters, if they're not stopping nobody, who gives a damn about KD, Kyrie, and shooters? Like every, It seems like every one of their losses, and I would have to go back to really look at this, but off the top of my head, they had Thomas Bryant destroying them. And shout out to Thomas Bryant because he has continuously offensively just been so good this season. Um, Thomas Bryant destroyed them. Um, Clint Capella was really good against them. John Collins, like they they are lacking defensive impact, especially on the inside. And you think about guys like Jared Allen, you think about guys of like DeAndre Jordan, you would expect them to be good defenders. That's kind of the reputation they have as an NBA fan. But when you're watching them play, they don't have that whatsoever. So the lack of rebound and the no defense is really going to be a problem for for this team. And at, at as of right now, y'all, the Knicks are a better team. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that? So they got to they got to figure those things out. There was something Steve Nash he showed his age as a as a coach today, um, and I know he's missing some players, so rotations will be weird. And rotations are weird across the entire league because of the short and short and uh, off season and everything. Rotations were weird, and then that draw up of the last play was definitely just bad. Um, even though they were this close to winning because that shot that Kevin Durant got, the second shot, it's probably a shot he makes 80% of the time. Um, so maybe I'm, I'm overreacting to some things, but you have to get to the point where there are some guys on this roster that should be getting some PT. Bruce Brown was known as a really good defender in, in Detroit, and when they traded for him, I was like, oh, snap, that's their defender. That's their wing defender right there. I don't know if I've seen him on the court this year, and if it was, it was like garbage time minutes. I don't know. Timothy Luau Cabarro, I love Timothy Luau Cabarro. But if you substitute him for Bruce Brown in the starting lineup, I think everything will be okay. Because that allows the second unit to have a little bit more scoring than just saying, here, Karis LeVert, do it. Because sometimes Kevin, Kevin, Karis LeVert can't just do it. So adding another guy to their second unit that can score the ball would help, and that could be TLC. And then Bruce Brown can just come in and be all of the defensive impact. You got to shoot in, in Joe Harris. You got to shoot in KD and Kyrie. You don't need Timothy Luau Cabarro there as well. You get what I'm saying? So I would I would experiment with getting Bruce Brown some minutes. And maybe he's an overrated defender, but I've always seen him as a good defender when he was in Detroit. But granted, I didn't watch too many Detroit Pistons games over the past couple seasons. So am I worried about what the Brooklyn Nets got going on right here? Slightly. Slightly. But y'all know how the NBA season works. This can all be changed in a week, and we'll be talking about them on a five-game win streak. The next game that I watched, I did not watch Lakers-Grizzlies. I didn't have any interest in that, especially with all the injuries the Grizzlies were going through. Even though for a lot of this, when I was just checking scores, they were into the game, obviously they didn't end up winning. Didn't watch a much of Denver versus the, the Timberwolves, but the parts that I did watch had my boy Campazzo going cool. Was today his career high in the NBA? 15 points. Bro, Campazzo's fun. He just is. And I knew he was going to be fun because when they signed him, when it was announced that he was going to come over, I looked him up. I was like, who is this guy? I've never heard of him. I don't follow any basketball outside of the NBA. Very small amount of uh, college basketball gets followed by me. And then EuroLeague, count me out because I don't know anything. So when I watched the highlights, he was fun. He was a short king. His passing ability was amazing. It's like, give him some minutes. And today he had his best game as an NBA player, including some steals. Um, which is great to see a short king out there prospering. Speaking of short kings, I need Isaiah Thomas on the roster. I don't care which roster it is. Get Isaiah Thomas another contract. Um, Jazz versus Spurs got no time for me. The Bulls got a win and w- against a Luka list um, Dallas Mavericks. And I'm gonna say. I have decided to never bet on on anything sports related again. Today was the first day I've ever made a bet on like FanDuel or yada yada yada. This is not a promotion, but it takes out the enjoyment for me as a fan. I bet on the Bulls to win because it was like no Luca, my Bulls better win. So when they announced that Luca was out, I put a hundred down, and this was the most stressful I've ever been as a Bulls fan, and that is saying a lot. Just because I had a hundred dollars on the line, I won't do it again. I'm taking all that money out, deleting the app. I will not be gambling anytime this season. Um, Clippers Suns, I want to. Give a lot of credit to the Clippers for winning this game, but I also want to give a lot of credit to the Suns because at one point I had stopped watching because it was a quick 20 pointer and then it ended up being, I think, at the max 31 point lead. And they slowly fought back, they slowly fought back, and they turned it into a respectable game. But you had a Paul George game, and we've talked about it plenty of times before. But when Paul George is on, he is on, and there's not many people that can stop him. But today was one of those days. So if Paul George can continue to keep his foot on the gas pedal, man, we're talking about great things about Paul George again. 
For real. We were talking about great things. So shout out to them for getting that win, even though it, hey, it was looking rough for a second. Yeah, the biggest lead, 31, is kind of rough. And then the last game of the day, we already kind of talked about it with Steph Curry doing what Steph Curry can do um, against the Portland Trail Blazers. This would, is something I would consider a bad loss for the Trail Blazers. Now, they did have it where um, they had a legendary player put up a legendary night, literally Steph Curry career high night. But he doesn't put up a career high if their, their coverage is on the pick and roll is a little bit different. Uh, Enos Cantor played I think the entire fourth quarter one of my favorite things to do is to watch a game as a neutral fan with someone that is a fan of the team so my friend D Mills is a big Portland Trailblazer fan and we were watching this game together and seeing his reaction to stuff it was just amazing and his main reaction was why the hell is Enos Kander getting so many minutes all oh, Yusuf Nurkic is, is really struggling to start off the season and where are defenders at where's Derek Jones Jr. because we need some length for, for Stephen Curry I just love to see Stephen Curry do great things. Um, Draymond Green has yet to score a bucket this season. It will it will come eventually. You you already saw his increased playmaking and how much it has helped this team. It's significantly in this game. So I'm 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 excited to see what they can do um for the rest of the season. I'm not expecting them to make no run or anything. But Eric Pascal, shout out to the homie. I think that they said four consecutive games of him scoring double digit points off the bench, and they're gonna need that type of production. I think that's it. That's today's slate of games. What I thought about them. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave it a like. Call the game.